In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can track button clicks with the help of Google Tag Manager and send an event into Google Analytics to Facebook or to AdWords. All and more coming up right after this. Hey there and welcome back to another video of measureschool.com teaching you the data-driven way of digital marketing. My name is Julian and on this channel we do marketing tech reviews, tips and tricks videos and tutorials just like this one. So if you haven't yet, consider subscribing to our channel and also click that bell notification icon so you stay up to date with what we do every week. Now today we want to do an update video on a very popular video that we did a while back here on this channel which is about button click tracking with Google Tag Manager. Now once you watch this video you will understand how auto event tracking works with Google Tag Manager and then be able to send an event to Google Analytics, to Facebook Analytics or even AdWords. So let's dive in to today's video. But before we get started, we need to actually learn a little bit of theory on how auto event triggers work within Google Tag Manager. So if you want to install event tracking with the help of Google Tag Manager, you need to be aware that Google Tag Manager can deploy an auto event trigger. And this trigger actually has two functionalities. One is the listener functionality and the second one is the filter functionality. These combined determine whether a tag like an event tag is deployed and transfers information to Google Analytics. Let's make this a little clearer. So let's say you have a website where you have Google Tag Manager installed and you deploy an auto event trigger, in this case, a click trigger. Now this click trigger will first of all listen to any kind of clicks that happen on the different elements. And every time somebody clicks on any of the elements on your website, it will forward an event into the trigger. And then the filter functionality will determine whether this event is the right event and then based on that turn true or false and in turn trigger your tag that transfers information to Google Analytics could also be Facebook Analytics or AdWords. So again there are two functionalities one is the listener functionality and one is the filter functionality and therefore we need to go through steps in order to ensure that both of those functionalities actually work. So in order to build effective event tracking with Google Tag Manager, we need to go through these steps. First is to build a generic click trigger and then try out to trigger the event. If this can be listened to and we can actually pick up the right event, we can refine our trigger, turn our generic click trigger into a specific one only for our element that we actually want to track and then connect this all to a tag. So let's go through these steps. Back in our demo shop, we have here a website where we have Google Tag Manager installed. Now, if you don't have Google Tag Manager installed, then you can follow along this video that will help you to do just that. Now, we have Google Tag Manager installed here. If we want to make sure that this is actually installed, we can always look in our Tag Assistant for Google Chrome or go into our Google Tag Manager and actually click on the preview in debug mode, which will put our browser and only our browser into a special state which will give us the ability on our website to see what's going on with Google Tag Manager by just reloading it. And we see this little console pop up down here, which will get really important in a second. Now, the first step that we want to go through is to actually build a generic click trigger. For that, we'll go over to Google Tag Manager, click on the triggers and click on new right here. Then we give this all a name and click on the trigger configurations. Here we can choose our trigger type. What kind of event do we want to listen to? In our case, it would be a click trigger and we'll go with the all elements. You can also use the just links, but to keep it more general, I will go with the all elements trigger. Now here we don't have to do anything anymore. We want to listen to all clicks because it's a generic click trigger and just see whether this works for our element. We're going to save this. And before we continue, you need to go under variables here and actually go to the built in variable tab and go to configure Then make sure under the click section here, you have these click triggers actually enabled. You only have to do this once. Once they're enabled, you can use them. Now up here in our preview and debug mode, we can go to refresh. You can also click that preview button one more time and this will refresh our Google Tag Manager in the background. And once we reload the page, we should have now the listener functionality installed 
on our page. Now, Google Tag Manager should be able to listen to any kind of click that we do on our website. So for example, I can click here, I can click up here. I'm gonna do this with the command key press so it opens up in a new tab. I'm gonna click here and obviously also on our add to cart click to see whether something moves down here and Google Tag Manager is actually able to pick this up. So I'm gonna click on this add to cart button and I don't want to be redirected to the next page. So I'm gonna do this with the command key pressed. I'm gonna go back here and we can see all these different events. Now, what we want to do is actually go to the second tab called variables here, and then go through our events that were transferred to Google Tag Manager. So for example, here's the fourth event and I'm gonna click on it. We have here the variables and we can see all the click variables that we have just enabled and can see how they get filled. Now, every time you click on a different element, these variables get filled differently. So if you go to this fifth click, we see that things are changing inside of this variable menu. Now, if you remember, I first clicked on this title here and it had the click text, Happy Ninja. We can go to the next one and I clicked on apparently something with singles that was right here. And this was transferred as the click text. Now you also notice that there are other variables that get filled differently. For example, the click element, which is a URL. We see maybe the click URL. This is where we are redirected to. And sometimes you also see click classes or an ID. So if your element in the background of the HTML has a classes or an ID, it would be perfect because our trigger actually picks this up and puts it into these variables. And here we see the single add to cart button was clicked. And this is the element that I actually clicked on when I clicked on our add to cart button. Now the key being here that we need to give our trigger now a rule that he can decide on when to actually fire our tag later on. So we want to make it very unique in order to not get mixed up. We could, for example, choose the click text, which is add to cart and which differs widely from the other click text that we have down here. We could also use the click classes, which is pretty unique. So for our case, I think the click classes is perfect because the others don't really get filled here. So click classes already is great. So now we're gonna go over to our second step to refine the filter. We go over to our trigger again and turn our generic click trigger into a specific one, which is specific to our button click. We're gonna click on the configurations and this time we don't want to fire our trigger on all clicks, but only on some clicks. So you're gonna to go to the some clicks function and then we're gonna choose the variables that we identify to be unique in our button click. In our case, that would be the click element. Now we have different matching options here like regex, CSS selector and so on. I'm gonna make it easy and just choose the contains option. So if the click element contains, and what do we have to put in here? Single add to cart button. Let's just take this part. Then I want to turn this whole trigger true and fire our tag. So let's save this. And we have now turned our generic click trigger into a specific one. Now, in order to test this out, we actually need to first connect this to a tag and we're gonna send an event into Google Analytics. So for that, we'll go over to tags, click on new here and give it a name. Go to tag configurations and I wanna send something into Google Analytics. I have universal analytics running. The track type will be an event. As the category, I'm just gonna type click and as the action, add to cart. And now I have to define where to send this all. If you already have a Google Analytics settings variable, you can choose that or go to the override settings in this tag and input your tracking ID. Now the tracking ID is specific to Google Analytics. So let's go over to Google Analytics and in the admin section of your account under tracking info, you can find your tracking code, which is this ID right here. Copy that and put it into this field. Now, last but not least, we need to connect our tag to a trigger and we have already this part prepared. So here's our button click trigger and we can save this now and click on our refresh button again. Go back to our page. Let's close all these pages here. Reload this page and click on our add to cart button. I will do this again with the command key pressed. We'll open it up in a new tab, but we see down here our fourth event was a GTM click. 
if I click on this, I see that no tag was actually fired. Why is that? You can click on our Google Analytics event tag and maybe I did something wrong in the trigger. So I'm gonna scroll down here and I can see that the click trigger failed. So that's the X here. And I can see that the click element didn't contain single add to cart button. Now that wonders me. So I need to check out what is the state of the click element. So I'm gonna go over to variables and I see that here it says click element and this was what it was filled with. Now I actually originally wanted to use the click classes. So you can all learn from here. You need to have the right variable and the right value in place in order for your trigger to turn true. So let's correct this mistake. Go over to triggers again and click quickly in here and we'll choose the click classes instead of click element. Let's save this, refresh, go back to our page, reload and click on the add to cart again. And this time we should see our tag fired. GTM click on this click event. We had our event tag fire. You can also look that up in our tag assistant if there's anything sent to Google Analytics. So here we see one event that happened. And we now should also see this in our Google Analytics account. When we go over to the real time reporting and under events, we should see a new event entering our account. Now later on, you will be able to see such click events under the behavior report under events here. And that will give you all the statistics about the different events that came into your account. But this takes up to 48 hours to fill correctly. So now we have deployed our Google Analytics tag. Now obviously we can also deploy other tags because we already have that trigger now prepared. We can reuse that trigger. So for example here, I have a Facebook event it sends over a track event, add to cart to Facebook, and we can just attach our click trigger to also fire this to Facebook. Or our AdWords conversion tracking, if we wanna track our add to cart click as a conversion, can also use this tag with this trigger. Let's save this, refresh, go back to our page, reload that, and click on the add to cart. See if this all works. And we see when I clicked on it, we had three events fire into AdWords, Facebook, and Google Analytics. You can also see this here in our tag assistant. We have now our Google AdWords conversion tracking. We have our Facebook pixel helper that also has received our add to cart event. Now, once you have made sure that everything of this works correctly, there's only one step to take this live onto your website. And this is actually publishing this as a new version in Google Tag Manager. So click on the submit button here, enter a descriptive name. And then you can publish this onto your website and it will now be tracking the button clicks on that add to cart button for all your users on the website. All right, so there you have it. This is how you can track button clicks with the help of Google Tag Manager. If you are new to Google Tag Manager, then I encourage you to check out our video playlist for beginners on Google Tag Manager. We have a whole tutorial series on that as well. And if you like this video, then please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel right over there because we bring you new videos just like this one every week. Now, my name is Julian. See you in the next one.